All right, welcome to part two, uh, Victory Through Submission. I hope you've been blessed so far. Uh, we heard part one last week, part two today. We're looking forward to another part uh, next week. And I hope that you've been able to experience some testimonies of some victories this last week uh, through your submission to the Lord. And uh, could we just invite Pastor Phil to come on up and, and join me in praying for him today? Thank you, Heavenly Father, um, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that has just downloaded some beautiful treasures into the heart of Pastor Phil, the Lord. And I just thank you that a leader is somebody who, who knows the way, he goes the way, he shows the way, O oh Lord. And I just thank you that um, you have chosen Pastor Phil, O oh Lord, to uh, show us the way as he is going along the way, O oh Lord. And I thank you that you are constantly downloading to him, revealing to him, uh, so that he knows the way to go, Lord. And we just ask um, that you pour out a blessing on all of us, O oh Lord, as we listen to this message, God. And would this be a week of victory for us, O oh Lord, things that have held us captive for too long, Lord, uh, that you would teach us and show us how, through our submission to you, Lord, that we can break free from those things, O oh Lord, and experience victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, church. Thank you, Pastor Melody. Thank you, Pastor Nelda, for that great time of communion. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior, happy and blessed. Part two of victory through submission. The Lord has given us the victory, but it's through submission that we walk in that victory. Here are the words of Jesus to us this morning. Luke 10, verse 19, from the Passion Translation. Now you understand that I have imparted to you my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. Wow. So we are reminded that this victory comes through Submission. We already have the victory, but the verse goes on in verse 20. And it says, however, your real source of joy isn't merely that these spirits submit to your authority, but that your names are written in the journals of heaven and that you belong to God's kingdom. This is the true source of your authority. Victory or authority in Christ Jesus is simply knowing who you are. It's simply knowing that the Father loves you enough to protect you. The Father loves you enough to provide for you. Yes. The Father loves you enough to give you purpose. The Father loves you enough to uh, be who he said he will be. He's our ever-present help in time of need. Your authority comes simply through a personal relationship with Jesus. The greatest hindrance to knowing God is our pride. The Bible tells us that. James 4, 6. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. This is why he says, God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace continually to the lonely, those who are humble enough to receive it. You see, God loves you so much that he literally sets himself against the proud. He, he, that word means to actively fight against. God literally comes and is not fighting to harm you, fighting to stop you from being harmed because of pride. <laughs> because he knows that, like I always say, the anointing oil flows down. And he wants to put you in that posture of humility because he gives more grace to the humble. Even Jesus reiterates the kingdom principle of submission after teaching about our authority in Christ. The next verse, verse 21, he says, Then Jesus, overflowing with the Holy Spirit's joy, exclaimed, Father, thank you, for you are Lord supreme over heaven and earth. You have hidden the great revelation of this authority from those who are proud. Those wise in their own eyes, and you have shared it with these who humble themselves. 
Yes, Father, this is what pleased your heart, to give these things to those who are like trusting children. Wow. In a nutshell, that's what the whole of life is about. Learning not to rely on our own strength. Somehow, as we get older and begin to acquire more knowledge, we begin to think that we know more than God. And the Bible tells us that it's childlike faith that actually defines your authority. Trusting in God. A, a child does not question you when you say, I'm going to do something. In fact, they'll remind you. <laughs> and that's what faith is. Faith is speaking God's word back to him. God, remember what your word says. The Bible says in the book of Peter that we should stir ourselves up through way of remembrance. So this is childlike faith, realizing that even Jesus himself could not do anything independent of God's help in his life. <laughs> Chew on that for a bit. The Bible tells us that he was equal with God, but because of his love for us, he humbled himself, Philippians 2, like that of a servant, and came down to sympathize with our weaknesses so that he could understand us, so that he can relate to us. My wife shared something while she was praying for me. She says, a leader is someone who knows the way, shows the way, and goes the way. Jesus had to come down, feel what you are feeling. For him to say, I am the way, trust me. He had felt, he had been tempted, he has gone through everything you and I have gone through. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So just approaching that throne with boldness is a posture of humility. We talked about that during the kingdom school. Confidence. Confidently speaking, coming to God openly and uh, boasting even in him. In a sense, you're coming to him with a sense of expectation. See, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I like to call him my life coach. Okay? And it, one of the reasons why I sent you guys that scripture, like I said, the angel came and gave me that in the dream, Acts 20, 32. I entrust you to God's word and the message of his grace. And I felt the Lord reminding me and telling me, he says, a good leader, a good pastor, leads them to the message of his grace. I am not good enough. I am not intelligent enough. I am not anointed enough to be your life coach. I can bring some principles, some nuggets, and guide you to he who is perfect. He who is perfect in every way. Yes, praise God, I can give some counsel in relationships, in marriage. But Jesus is our great high priest. He is our life coach. He has been tempted in every way. So let us find all our answers in the person of Jesus. And we're talking about victory through submission. So we all know, he started by saying, all authority has been given unto you. That's the Greek word, exposure. It means power to choose. God has given you the power to make right choices. God has given you the power to say no to ungodliness. God has given you the power to resist the devil, despite the inclination of the flesh. But how do we get this power? And we find this answer in the lifestyle of Jesus. In Hebrews 5, verse 7. It says, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Reverent submission. That word submission, it means to obey under or to listen under. Pastor Melody is going to round up this series next week and she's going to be breaking down what obey means in our own acronym. So, God gave me a phrase through this scripture, and that phrase is that the secret of a successful lifestyle is hidden in your daily submission. Wow. We've seen it in Jesus throughout the days of Jesus' life. He offered up prayers 
and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. The Daniel prayer is one example. I always like to use this as a guide, not a legalistic pattern. Praying three times a day in the morning, morning, noon, and evening. It's a time, to, a way to remind ourselves to keep our eyes on him. Because you know what happens when we keep our eyes on him? The Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace. See, his mind is stayed on him. So that word daily is key. And the Bible tells us in Luke 9, verse 23, says, And he said to all, If anyone would come after me and let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And he said to to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So you see, the Bible gives us some commands. And every command from God is a word of wisdom. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So whenever God gives you a command, don't think authoritarian. Think a God who loves me and is giving me the nuggets, the secrets to life. And he's saying that when we pick up our cross, that word cross there is just symbolic of self-denial. And, and it, the word deny actually means, it means to forget oneself, to lose sight of oneself and one's own interests. Abstain, deny. Lose sight of your own worries. Lose sight of your own problems. Deny yourself, your own personal interests. God knows what you need. God knows how much your mortgage is. God knows how much your monthly car payments are. God knows what it says in the doctor's report. You don't need to remind him. You don't, your mind doesn't need to be on that every day. Deny yourself daily. And that word daily is the Greek word kata. It's the same word that is used in Ephesians 3.20 where it says, to him who can do immeasurably more than he can ask or imagine according to the power that's at work within him. That's the Greek word kata. It means according, it means daily, it means by, in, or at. So in other words, we can only do or receive grace from God to the degree to which we rely on him daily. What did Jesus tell us in Matthew 6? Give us this day our daily bread. Daily again. I'm telling you that when you just walk daily with Jesus, it adds up. So I want to just give us a simple reminder today. Jesus told us, or the word of God told us, Jesus, (laughs) 2 Corinthians 7 verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. We see there another conditional statement. We all want healing. Whether it's financial healing, whether it's physical healing, whether it's relational healing, we see this principle in humility. Somebody has once said that H is the first alphabet in the kingdom of God. Humility, humility, humility. Humble thyself before the Lord. He gives more grace to the humble. We can limit God based on on our posture towards him. God wants to bless us beyond our widest dreams. I don't care if people misunderstand me saying this. Okay, there he goes again, sounding like a prosperity preacher. What does the Bible say in Luke 12, 32? Fear not, little flock, for it gives him great happiness to give you the kingdom. Does that not sound like prosperity? Does that not sound like an abundant God? He wants to bless us. He wants to have, he wants to bless us, as the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, to have more than enough left over so we can share with others. Psalm 78, verse 41, the Passion Translation says, again and again, they limited God, preventing him from blessing them continually, They turn back from him and provoke the Holy One of Israel. So we see there clearly in Scripture that God wanted to bless the Israelites. God wanted to bless his children. God still wants to bless his children. But they turn back. That word turn back simply means to retreat. And sometimes we're present in church, but in our hearts, in our trust and our reliance in God, we've retreated. 
We speak, and then we take back our confession. We are double-minded. And what does the scripture tell us about being double-minded? James 1, 6 to 8. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Wow. It is so important that we search our hearts and we are hiding God's word in our hearts daily because it is God's grace working in us both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. You can't make yourself believe God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God will do what it is designed to do if only we do not retreat. Retreat from the people of God. Retreat from the things of God. Retreat from our daily walk with God. Retreat into doubt. Retreat into condemnation. What a beautiful time of communion. As the communion was going on, not to say anything against any church, but I just wanted to reiterate, in this church, we believe that God's hands are open for all. And in fact, communion is such a beautiful time where we can appropriate God's grace for everyone who believes that grace is available. And we do that to remind ourselves that God is good and we're not. That the communication, which is communion, that word means communion, that the communication of thy faith will become effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is within you. When we approach that table, we come with boldness because we know that we have something good within us. We have his mercy. We have his grace. Do not retreat. Do not retreat into past memories. Do not retreat into the lies of the devil. Do not retreat into the persecution and what people are saying about you rather than what God has said about you. Do not retreat. No retreat, no surrender. Hebrews 10, 35 says, Do not throw away your confidence, for it has great reward. And I tell you, that a lot of, I've seen that a lot of people, when we go through the seasons of life, we begin to retreat. Proverbs 13, verse 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. The heart has become sick. We begin to retreat. And the Bible literally tells us why we retreat. The next verse, verse 42 says, They forgot his great love, how he took them, by his hand and with redemption's kiss, he delivered them from their enemies. Wow. I don't know about you, but I'm human and my soul leaks. I tend to forget sometimes. <laughs> I even forget his words sometimes. So I go to the word of God. Even though I know the scripture, I open up the scripture and I speak it out. For God so loved the world. That whosoever believes in him will not die, but will have everlasting life. And I begin to meditate on it. And the verse goes on and it says, For God did not come to this world to condemn the world. He did not send his son to condemn the world. Sometimes we retreat into condemnation, don't we? But he came that through him, his son, through his son, the world might be saved. So, so, healed, saved, and delivered. And I just begin to remember, so wait a minute. I'm already whole resisting sickness. I'm already blessed resisting poverty. I'm already the head and not the tail. He has given me everything I need pertaining to life and godliness. I am already seated with him in heavenly places. And I begin to stir myself up by way of remembrance. I begin to bring up all the testimonies. When I wake up every morning, I remember the testimony of how he blessed me with that house. When I look at my spouse, I remember where I was before I got married. When I look at my children, I remember those days where I always dreamt about becoming a father. Now I'm actually that father. Don't forget where the mercy of God has found you. One easy way not to retreat, one easy way to stay confident, confident and not throw away our confidence is by always forgetting what is behind and straining towards what's ahead. And counting your blessing. The Lord spoke to me last night. He says, if we understood the power of prayer, then we will understand that most of us, if not all of us, will be dead by now. 
You're alive today. You're breathing. Thank God. He says, but I got a pain in my body. Well, I haven't yet seen results yet. Thank God for life. The word of God sustains you. In the book of Psalms, the Bible says that he shall nurse us, restore us back to health. It takes time sometimes. It takes a process. We're being nursed by God. <laughs> wow. When we forget, we neglect. And when we neglect, you will eventually regret. The Bible says in Hebrews 2 verse 3, it says, How can we neglect so great a salvation? Salvation is all-encompassing. It's the sozo, it's the healing, it's the deliverance, it's the provision. How can we neglect so great a salvation? That word neglect, it means to be careless, to neglect, to make light of, be negligent, or have no regard. Wow. Do you think that during the day sometimes we are careless with the Bible? We're careless with prayer? Or we make light Sunday? You know, I'm not in the mood. Every time I'm coming to this church, I just see people jogging on a nice Sunday morning. I say, you know what? That feels good, but oh, you have no idea what you're neglecting. You have no idea what you're making light. David says, since I was born and now I'm getting old, I have never seen the righteous forsaking or begging for bread. My wife is here, ask her. Since the day I married her, if God has ever spoken and not brought to pass. Have you ever not seen the faithfulness of God in our lives, Melody? Has God ever spoken a word and not brought through? Have we ever prayed and not gotten results? <laughs> if, if nobody in this world is convinced, my wife is convinced, that he's a good God, he is faithful. <laughs> and he's saying today, do not throw away your confidence. Do not retreat. Become weak in my presence and learn to rely consistently on me and watch me continually give you more grace, more grace, more grace. God is not limited. Or we can limit God, but God himself is limitless regardless of what we think. But as far as our experiences go, we will experience the deliverance of God only as far as we believe. Matthew 9, 29 says, Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. It's the same Greek word, kata, daily. According, by your daily trust in me, be it done unto you. So another way of, of interpreting this is then he touched their eyes saying, through or by your daily submission or according to your faith, be it done unto you. Those who believe God doesn't heal will not be healed. Those who believe that the, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for today will not receive it. We must believe to receive. Faith takes the limits of God. Unbelief puts limits on God. It's according to the power, by the power, by the daily submission, trusting in God, that we see the victory in our lives. Submission is a form of humility. And humility is simply agreeing with God and relying on him daily. It's not adding or taking away from the word of God. Submission or humility is submitting to God's truth. It's as simple as that. And so we're talking about daily, and I'm rounding up here. So we're talking about daily. Every day there's a gift for you. Every day there's increase. I talked about it in Matthew 6. Give us this day our daily bread. You see, I pray that God will open our eyes for us to see the benefit we have in Christ Jesus. Yes. Psalm 68 verse 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. 
the God of our salvation. Selah. That's the God we serve who daily loads you with benefits. Well, you see, the thing about loading you with benefits is that even the apps today, when your phone is loaded with money, you have to do something. And it transfers to your bank. <laughs> so we've been loaded with benefits in our spirit. We have everything we need pertaining to life and godliness in our spirit. And we, we, we appropriate it or we transfer it from our spirit to our soul by faith and submission in Christ Jesus. We submit to God's truth. And the truth sets us free. We walk in humility and he gives more grace. That grace enables you to understand and receive from your daily benefits. You're going through something and all of a sudden a scripture pops up and reminds you, hey, Isaiah 43 says that when I walk through the fire, it shall not burn me. When I walk through the flood waters, I shall not be drowned. <laughs> There's a financial need and Philippians 4.19 pops up and says he shall meet, fill up all your needs according to his riches and glory. Condemnation sets in and then Romans 8 pops up and tells you now there's no condemnation for those of us who are Christ Jesus and that nothing can separate you from God's love. It's the word of God. You see, we're trying to understand God outside of his word. The more we trust in his word, the more we renew our minds, the more we hide God's word in our hearts, it transforms us and it enables us to receive from our spirit. The word of God, the Bible tells us, is a double-edged sword. And it separates soul and spirit. Oh, that's why the word of God is the best counselor. I have nothing against going to see therapists. I have nothing against talking to your pastors and receiving counseling. But only the word of God can separate that soul, that trauma, that, that, that wound, that hurt, that unforgiveness from God's truth and put you in that headspace to receive the peace that brings healing. Walking by faith, not by sight. Greek word sight, idos, which just means outer body. We're, we're perceiving life based on feelings, the five senses, or rather than walking by faith, by your spirit that has Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. When we begin to see the Father through the eyes of faith, when we begin to perceive every circumstance through the eyes of faith, then we can find the victory we need to rise above every season of life. Father, I want to thank you that we are more than conquerors, and I believe it and I receive it, and I declare it, and I appropriate it. And like the scripture says, submit to God daily. I added that one, daily, and resist the devil. When we are loaded or we receive grace from our daily benefits each day, we are empowered with the authority, with the wisdom, with the discernment to resist the devil and overcome every attack he throws your way. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask today that you open our eyes. David says, open my eyes to see wondrous things in your law. Today, Lord Father, we pray that you open your eyes, open our eyes to see what has already been provided in your word. I ask that you release the gift of discernment, the gift of understanding, Put in us a desire to sit, to abide in your word so that your word will begin to do what it's designed to do. Father, I thank you that you sent your word to heal our diseases. And by faith right now, Lord, we submit to your truth. We submit to every prophetic word spoken concerning us. We submit to your promises and we receive your rest. We cast our cares upon you. We declare that we are light bearers. We are more than conquerors. We are whole resisting sickness. 
We are blessed resisting poverty. We submit to your truth and we rise victorious in Christ Jesus. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah.